What effect are concussions having on youth sports participation? It's a subject that's of interest to me because I played in the NFL for 15 years and am currently part of the class action lawsuit that's going on between NFL players, former NFL players, and the NFL. So I've read a lot about TBI, as you see up here, which is traumatic brain injuries, uh, effects that happen when you get banged in the head many times, and also CTE, which I'm sure you've seen a lot if you've read anything about this subject, and that is chronic traumatic encephalopathy. And it's uh, what some of my former teammates have, some, unfortunately, that have taken their lives. There are probably a lot that have it that we don't know about yet, and unfortunately, we don't know until, uh, until guys pass, even though there are some things that are going on with uh, some living players. But what piqued my interest most when Ms. Kellerman contacted me about speaking today was an observation that I made right here on the Pali campus last fall. As Jonathan said, I coach football here. And every day that I went out to practice this year, we only had about 30 players, give or take five, on any given day. But as I walked out to practice, I walked by the cross country team. And I thought to myself, gosh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of kids on that cross country team, mainly the boys team. And you know, eyeing it up, I would say there were 50 or 60 boys out there running cross country. So I started asking myself, is, is all this attention being paid to concussions starting to affect what parents are encouraging their kids to do? And especially here in this community, that's a, that's a very wealthy community, it's a very intelligent community, it's very educated. And I started to think, I, I kept asking myself, you know, is this a trend? Is, is there something going on here that we're not having as many football players because of concussions and cross country, which is obviously great activity, great athletic activity, but no, don't have to worry about the contact and the concussions. So I embarked on a, on a journey. Uh, I, I started going crazy on the internet. Probably, to be totally honest, spent way more time than I should have trying to research this, but there's lots out there. So these are some, some of the highlights, some, some of the statistics that I, that I came across. So there are 43 states now in the U.S. that have passed uh, legislation that says that you have to have a written note to be reinstated, to participate after you've had a concussion. That's great. Now, one of the problems that I came across is, as you see there, Schools are required to have this, but clubs are not. And as a lot of you know that participate in sports, that the way of the future seems to be that, especially if you want to be really good, kids are playing in clubs. So I found that to be a, a, a little bit of a, a troubling spot. Now, this next point, in 2001, I found this in several articles, several studies, 2001, 150,000 diagnosed concussions. In 2009, there were 250,000 diagnosed concussions, as you see, age 19 and younger. I've seen some crazy numbers. They're, 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 the numbers seem to be all over the map. I, I, I saw as many as like 4 million emergency room visits by, by youth, 17 and under. That seemed a little extreme, but this statistic seemed to be the most consistent. I also point out here, the, the sports with the highest incidence of concussions. For the males, football, ice hockey, lacrosse, wrestling, soccer. For females, soccer, lacrosse, baseball. Now, in the back of your mind, I want you to just remember lacrosse, because there's a couple interesting points that I came across that I'm gonna go back to. Some more statistics here. This, and this really jumped out at me. Female soccer players have 40% more concussions than male soccer players. I found that these two statistics to be very interesting. Female basketball players, 240% more chance of a concussion than males. Now, I will say that I do have an opinion on that, but that's a conversation for another day. Unfortunately, if you've had a concussion, your chance of having a second one are greater easier to have, and that increases for multiple concussions. And then the younger you are, the longer it takes to recover, okay? 
How many, how many of you would know what a, the sign of a concussion looked like if one of your teammates or friends had a concussion? I put this website in here because I came across it and I thought it was really interesting that the CDC had done this whole heads up program. I didn't know about it. I think it was two, two and a half pages of signs, you know, vomiting, dizziness, so, uh, you know, unconsciousness. Um, I found it to be pretty interesting. Okay, so let's talk about how many kids your ages participate, your ages and younger, participate in sports. Uh, for the 2013 school year, there were four and a half million males, 3.2 million females. Now this, I will point out, this website that I got this information from is, is pretty interesting if, if any of you all wanna go on there. It's the National Federation of High School Sports Associations. I think I got that right. It was lots of data, all kinds of raw numbers. Anyway, that's where most of this comes from. The four most popular sports, basketball, soccer, baseball, football. From what I could tell and, and the calculations and other things that I read, about, it's about a 4% decline for those four major sports over the last four years, 2008 to 2012, okay? So when I was reading it and looking at it, I was like, eh, that's, yeah, that's a, a small percentage, but didn't, if you, if you separate them out as I did below. So high school football is down 2.3%. High school basketball down 1.8%, baseball's up 0.3%, soccer up 7.4%, which soccer's been one of the largest growing sports in the U.S. for quite a while. But I found this interesting that the U.S. Federation said that their participation in this same time period has been kind of stagnant. Um, so as I said, those are you know, they're, they were kind of, those numbers were kind of negligible to me as I was originally looking at them. But there were a couple things that jumped out at me going back to my point of what I saw here this fall with cross country. So high school cross country is up 11.6% in the same time period, 2008 to 2012. There were 500 more schools in that time period that were adding their statistics to the total number. So then I went to, to Coach Hansen and said, Okay, how many actual kids played football and how many participated in cross country? Well, I was only seeing the varsity when I was asking myself these questions in the fall, but as you can see here, football had 117 kids, that's freshman team, frosh soft team, varsity team. Cross country had 96, which was actually more than I thought. So I told you a few minutes ago to remember lacrosse. And this is a statistic that just jumped out at me like right off the computer screen. So high school lacrosse, I knew it was growing, is up 18.6% in this 2008 to 2012 time period. Okay, and also with 669 more schools added in that, in that time period. You can see the others. So this Pop Warner looks like, okay, maybe it is down. Maybe parents are paying attention to concussions maybe not letting their kids play that early of an age. So in a two year period, it's down almost 10%. I would say that's, that there, might be a, there might be a real correlation there. Little League Baseball, down 6.8%. I don't think baseball has a concussion issue. I don't, I'm not sure it ever will. So I think one of the things that's affecting for a fact is lacrosse, okay? You can see here, lacrosse up 158% nationwide, all ages, in this, in this four-year period. And I found this to be interesting, that it's being billed as the Wall Street sport. Help you all get into an Ivy League school, a small Ivy, an East Coast school where they've been playing lacrosse for a, a million years, okay? And uh, people coming out of college then, out of those great schools, are being recruited to Wall Street uh, because they're competitive people, they're, they're smart people, and they've done well. Okay, this is an interesting study that I found by uh, Marist College and HBO. I'm gonna go a little faster through it, but to my point of the Palo Alto community and the demographics, look at people who made $50,000 or more, 67% of them said they heard a lot about the concussion issue, okay? Those that made less than $50,000 per year, 47% said they heard a great deal about it. 
So education, there's, there's some big numbers there as well, uh, to my point, again, about the demographics. So in conclusion, the big four, yes, they were down 4%. I don't think it's all concussions. Um, as you see, from 07, 08, there were 37 sports in 2012, 2013, there were 48 sports that were, that were given statistics on this website. I think that the, yes, concussions is, is a little bit of it. I think the early focus, the, you know, the pressure to, to have to compete in one sport is hurting all sports. And then there's lots of other things for you all to do besides sports. I mean, look at, look at this great group that put on this TEDx event today. You know, are they athletes? I don't know that, but there's lots of other things for you all to do uh, besides sports. Uh, my pally observation, I've, I've talked about it quite a bit already. The cross country on this National Federation website, cross country has jumped two spots in popularity in this 08 to 2012 time period. I found that to be interesting. I think it's the demographics of the city that we live in. Concussions have a small effect. Now, this Title IX piece, I had to throw this in there because it was, it, it again, jumped out at the page at me, on me. So Title IX, hopefully most of you know, this is, this is again a subject for another day. Females, since June of 1972, female participation in high school sports has jumped 10 times from 300,000 to 3.2 million. And males has only increased 18%. I found that to be staggering. That's a, like I said, that's a subject for a whole nother day. And for you all, there's tons of data out there, tons. If you are interested in the subject, there's a lot of data to look at, a lot to filter through. But I still think that we need another five to 10 years to really see the effects of concussions on youth, youth football for sure, uh, and youth sports in general. My last point is this. I played in the NFL for 15 years. I played in college for five years. I played in high school for three. I played in junior high for two years. How many of you out here in the audience play a contact sport? How many of you wear a mouthpiece? Okay. So for 25 years, I played football. I've, I've had maybe one, because I've seen my medical records recently. I've had maybe one or two mild concussions and I attribute it to this little thing right here. Okay? I wore it for 25 years. Actually, that's not true. I wore it for 20 years because when I was a freshman, there was a dentist at UCLA that talked me into wearing a bottom mouthpiece when they were developing it. And you can tell that I can still talk with it in, right? I've talked a lot of guys into wearing it. The mouthpiece doesn't necessarily protect your mouth. The mouthpiece protects your brain because when you get hit, the vibrations get absorbed in this mouthpiece and they don't go up into your brain. So make, make your parents take you to the dentist if you don't wear a mouthpiece, have one fitted. It works miracles. It was a savior for me. And if there's anything that I did here today, it's hopefully convinced you to go and have one made and wear it. Thank you very much for having me.